Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We've got another rifle out on the bench today. Another lever gun, again from Rossi. This is one of the new R95. So this one is going to be chambered in, that's right guys, 3030. Now if you remember back to uh, a couple of my videos ago, um, whenever I reviewed the R92, the 357 mag, I was wishing that they would come out with a 3030. And unbeknownst to me, I guess it had probably already been in the works, but shortly after that, they released this guy in 3030. So it was only natural that I try and get one of these out for review and get it in and see what we can do with it, see how it shoots, take a look at it, fit finish wise, what's it going to do on paper, go over some of the features and just kind of see an, and get an overall feel for the rifle itself. So out of the box, minus the scope, base and rings, this is what you're going to get. So I did put the scope base and rings and scope on there for the review. So that way we can shoot a couple of groups and get it on paper. Otherwise it is just a flat top. It does have the ability of taking Marlin 336 scope bases because that's basically what this rifle is loosely based off of is the Marlin 336. It does have a few differences that, um, that I've seen that I've read about. So that's, uh, that's good. They've upgraded a couple of things. Um, so, but overall out of the box, this thing is, is nice guys. I mean, the fit and finish on it is, is spot on the, um, the wood, the texturing is, is very different. It's not like a checkering, like you're, you're used to seeing. I mean, it, it's a, it's a rough feeling texture to it, but it's not deep and it's not really that aggressive, but for a hunting rifle, I think it would serve its purpose just fine. Now, this is the Trapper model. So I seen this one. I was like, yep, that's the one I got to get, man, because this is the 16 and a half inch carbine. So as you can see, it does come with the large loop and it has a five plus one capacity. So you got five rounds in the tube. If you notice, the tube is cut back a little bit. And whenever I first seen this, I was like, man, I wish that was all the way out to the front. But what I think that they've done, they've probably cut this back because they know people are going to thread these. But then that also leads to one of the things that I don't like about this. You know, honestly, what else or how much more would it cost to have this thing threaded from the factory with all the guys that want to shoot suppressed nowadays, especially even in a hunting environment? I really think this should have come threaded 5.8.24 from the factory. But nonetheless... Um, the uh, butt pad on it is is amazing. I mean, it's a very squishy butt pad. The cycling of this rifle is is amazing, guys. I mean, it is smooth. And as you can see, there are no rounds in the chamber. But I mean, it is smooth, guys. The um, one of the improvements that they did offer in this Rossi, if you can see here on the bolt, if I can get a, they've installed or used somewhat of a uh, it's kind of like an ar-15 style of extractor so you get very positive extraction through this rifle um the loading of this gun it's very very easy i didn't notice any issues actually loading the rounds into the tube now let's get a overall weight so you can see what the weight of this is configured now the hammer extension i put that on myself that does not come with the rifle Let's see here, get this scale to zero out. And as configured with my scope, you're looking at about seven pounds, 12 ounces. So now I'm not gonna lie guys, this thing, I mean, it's it's a substantial piece of hardware. The, um, the uh, receiver and all that is steel. So, I mean, that's a good, a good note there. The barrel, I believe this is a one in 12 twist. So it should lead itself to very good accuracy with most 150 grain hunting loads. From the factory, this did ship with buckhorn iron sights. I had to take the front one off, however, because it was interfering with the scope base. But once this review is done, that's actually going to go back on. So um, I'll definitely be putting that back on the rifle itself. does come with front and rear sling studs. So just kind of initial thoughts. I really like the finish. The bluing and the coating is really good on this rifle. I don't see anything out of the way of marring or anything like that. Um, the only issue as far as from the factory, this one screw right here. I don't know if you guys can see that there in the camera, but it looks like it's a little boogered up. So, I mean, I would rather that been perfect like all the other ones, but I guess it's not a total deal breaker, but just kind of something to be mindful and then your then your front driftable iron sight there and you can take this off as well if you wanted to now 
this rifle here, um, I'm definitely going to get me a sling for it, but as far as, as needs go, I really want to get this thing threaded. I'm not even going to lie, guys. I think that would be super, super fun. But um, got just a cheap 4 to 12 scope on here just to get us through the shooting part of the review and see if we can post any groups. We're going to do some three-shot groups, and this is going to be with four different loads that I was able to source locally. So I've got just some standard... 150 grain soft point uh, power point Winchester, just a basic hunting load there. Um, I did find some 170 grain Federal Blue Box. This is their Power Shock stuff. I hadn't seen any 170 grain stuff, so it'd be an interesting to get some compare and contrast between different grain weights. And I found some of this Hammer Down stuff from Federal Premium. So this is 150 grain jacketed soft point. So it'd be interesting to see how those do. And then finally, the Lever Evolution 160 grain FTX from Hornady. This stuff's supposed to be supposed to be the business right here. So we are going to find that out. But for this particular application, I'm just going to shoot three shot groups, guys, at 110 yards. I think that's going to be more than sufficient for this type of a rifle and its application. So we're going to move everything over to the bench. We're going to get this thing sighted in, get it on paper, put some rounds down range, and see what this thing can do, guys. All right, guys, we got the rifle moved over here on the bench. We've got it sided in, put a few shots on paper down at 110 yards to get this scope squared away. So we're going to shoot our first three rounds. This is going to be the 150 grain soft point Winchester power point. We'll shoot three of these on paper, see what it does, guys. You all can follow along in the shot cam. Next one up here. Okay. Last one. See what this will do. It doesn't look too bad there. So let's just take this cool off just a little bit, guys, and then we'll try our next three rounds. We're gonna try the 170 grain Federal Power Shock. This is also a jacketed soft point as well, so we'll see how those do next. All right, guys, so we got our next three rounds loaded up. This is that 170 grain Power Shock. So we'll try our next target here, three rounds, see what she does. There's definitely got a bit more kick to it. Oh, we have a failure. It did not set that round off. Interesting. Now that could be ammunition or the rifle perhaps. Let's try our next round. I'll stick another round in it. That's definitely odd. Wow. <laughs> Took that one off. Before I stick that one back in, we're going to try and fire that one again, but let's stick another round out of the box in here just to give it benefit of the doubt. Then we'll see if we can shoot that one. Okay. Now, just for the sake of the review, let's see if it'll cook this one off here. I'm just going to send this one on to the shoot it at the steel. Nope, I think it's just a bad round, guys. Interesting. Interesting. We may have to pull that one apart and see if there's even any powder in it. But nonetheless, we got our group with that one, so I am going to let the barrel cool. 
whew, for a few minutes off of those, those 170 grain ones, they were hot, guys. But uh, I'll let it cool off for five minutes or so, let the barrel kind of level out here, and then we'll try three of our level evolutions. These are the 160 grain FTXs from Hornady, guys. Alright guys, we got our next three rounds loaded, the 160 grain FTX lever evolution from Hornady. So this is by far the most expensive ammo we got out for testing today. So let's try three of these and see what they do. Last one here, guys. All right. So, let's let the barrel cool another five minutes or so. And then we'll try the 150 grain hammer down for federal premium. All right, guys. So I could not for the life of me find out where that federal hammer down went. So I went ahead and readjusted the scope. We're going to try that three shot group again, just so we can get some data on all four on paper. So just kind of bear with me here. We're going to try these three again and see what we got, guys. Last one here, fellas. All right, so now I'm definitely going to go down and get the paper this time. We'll take a look at all of these different loads. We'll see how they did. And then we'll get some final shooting and some thoughts, guys. All right, guys. So I ran down and grabbed our paper here. Let's take a look and see how we did. So first one up is going to be this Winchester PowerPoint. So this is some of the, definitely some of the cheapest ammo that we've shot today. Uh, about 21 bucks a box, I guess, here locally. So still more than adequate for a hunting application, which is what this rifle is. This is by no means a bench rifle. The, uh, we got two shots here, basically in the same hole, and then one up here. So still, kind of take a look at my thumb here. The center circle here is one inch, so a little bit over an inch. I think that is still definitely minute of deer. Then second, we had our Blue Box Federal. This is the 170 grain stuff, so it was hitting way high. We've got two shots here on paper in the upper right quadrant. I'm guessing the other one probably is over here somewhere. We might be able to see it in the target cam, but I could not find it just going back there and looking. And something a little bit interesting, so I took that round that did not fire, and I went ahead and pulled it apart. And here is the case, here is the bullet. That's all the powder that was in there, guys. And I'm here to tell you, that is not a lot of powder. That's That might be, uh, maybe five grains of powder, if that. So this was a misload. So this was nothing to do with the rifle. This was definitely an ammunition problem. And guys, over the years, that's crazy too, because I have shot an, an absolute metric ton of Blue Box Federal over the years in 223, 243, and 308. And I have never not had one issue like that. So that's kind of wild. But, uh, you know, the more you know. So there's another data point for us today. Uh, the third round, we had the Hornady Lever Evolution, the 160 grain FTX. So we had one, two, three there. Again, those circles are about an inch. So I put my thumb there kind of for reference. Definitely minute of deer. And 
Lastly, we had the federal hammer down. So this was the second time around. Our first group that we shot of these, they were way off target. I couldn't even find them at all. I think they went past the backer board. But um, I may go ahead and edit out that so you guys don't have to watch just nothing happening on the, the target cam. But uh, just know that I did shoot this once originally and the shots did not land on paper. So I went ahead and reshot this for you guys just so we could, could get it on paper. But this is that, uh, that Federal Premium Hammer Down stuff. This is the nickel plated brass case ammo and i'm gonna say that right there i'd take that any day of the week out of a 16 and a half inch 30 30 i think that does and says what it needs to say about the rifle so here is and again if you guys hadn't seen that particular load it's a it's, it's a good looking round guys and these aren't overly expensive either these are only like 26 27 bucks a box which considering for a premium load that's that's pretty good if you compare that to the Hornady Lever Evolution, this stuff is just redonkulously expensive. It's like 40 bucks a box. Now, granted this does use the FTX projectile, so heck of a hunting round, I'm sure. But uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of a uh, compare and contrast between those two, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reposition the camera. I'm gonna fill that mag tube up and we're just gonna shoot some rounds offhand which is what this rifle was designed to do. And then we'll get some final thoughts, guys. All right, guys, so we repositioned the camera here. We're gonna take some shots at about 100 yards offhand on the steel target down there at the first backstop. I've got five rounds loaded up in the tube. We're gonna see what I can do with this thing off the shoulder, which as we all know, that's what these guns were kind of designed to do. These are, these are meant to be uh, uh, hunting woods guns, especially in the 16 inch carbine version, something you can tote around post up to the shoulder and take a shot on that trophy deer that you've been stalking all day long. So let's see what we can do here. Get some final thoughts on this thing. <laughs> Buddy, I tell you, this thing rocks the steel, man, inside of about 100 yards. You definitely know you hit it. Not too bad guys so I tell you functionality of the rifle has been absolutely spot on as you can see the, the action is totally smooth even after just shooting the rounds that we've shot here in this review I can honestly say this action has slicked up even a little bit more so that is really really nice to see that this does have just the standard cross bolt safety um, it works you know you also have the ability of dropping the hammer and keeping it down if you're walking in the woods, you don't have to use that if you don't want to. Pull weight on the trigger. This one here is about six pounds. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's stout, but it's a hunting rifle. That's about what you would expect. But uh, overall, guys, I am really, really happy with this rifle. It shoots really, really good for what it is. I think it's a it's a quality, quality look for a, uh, you know, a carbine in a 3030. You know, the 3030 is kind of making a rise again as well as lever guns. So definitely take a look at the Rossi. They did not provide this rifle. Uh, they have not provided anything to this channel, but uh, I continue to sing the praises of their guns because the ones that I've gotten, they, they just work. So, uh, and this one is no exception. So please let me know down in the comments. Is this something you guys think you might pick up for yourselves? I'd love to hear about it. If there's anything else you'd like to see on this rifle, post it up too. Be glad to help with that as well. As always guys, shoot straight, later.